I absolutely love Iowa State football. I remember Matt Campbell when he was coaching at Toledo, and I was thrilled when he was hired by Iowa State. The 2017 Cyclones are one of my favorite teams of all time, and players such as Alan Lazard, David Montgomery, and Brock Purdy have become some of my favorite football players ever. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the rise of Iowa State football, and also take a deeper dive into how Matt Campbell became one of the best young coaches in college football. If you love football like I do, please be sure to take a moment and subscribe to the channel. Also be sure to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, drop a comment about what I should do next, and make sure to turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. Now let's get started with the rise of Matt Campbell and Iowa State football. Iowa State football is not the first program you think of when you think about national championships or even good football schools in general. For fans closer to my age, the one thing we think about when it comes to Cyclones football is their 2011 win against Oklahoma State that shook up the BCS world. The Cyclones have only won two conference titles in program history, and that was over 100 years ago. The last time they even finished first in their division was all the way back in 2004, when they lost a tiebreaker to Colorado in the Big 12 North. Since 2000, the Cyclones have only had a winning season eight times, and before the Matt Campbell era, they were a perennial bottom feeder in the Big 12. So how did this program go from one of the worst Power Fives to a team that's now competing for Big 12 titles? Well, it all starts with their head coach, Matt Campbell. Before Matt Campbell was a hot young coach, he grew up in the town of Massillian, Ohio, and he grew up the son of a prominent high school football coach. His father actually coached for his rival school, but Matt's teams always beat his father. He was a really good football player and originally played for Pitt. He apparently didn't like the culture of Pittsburgh and what it stood for, so after one year there, he transferred to the University of Mount Union, a Division III school, and he'd have to settle for no more scholarship money. While there, he played for legendary head coach Larry Kiris, and they actually won three national titles while Matt played for the Ohio Power School. He was actually the Ohio Athletic Conference Player of the Year and an All-American, but he never played a snap of professional football. He decided that coaching was the best thing for him, and he started immediately after college. He took a job as a graduate assistant at Bowling Green, where he made a good impression on a guy named Scott Pioli. Scott was the director of player personnel for the New England Patriots, and he liked Matt so much that he tried to convince him to interview them with a job in the Patriots. Matt declined though, and he then returned to his alma mater and joined the staff at Mount Union. By 2006, he was the team's offensive coordinator, and he helped them win back-to-back -back national championships. From there, he went back to Bowling Green to become the team's offensive line coach, and he stayed there for two more years. After that, he relocated to the northeastern part of the state and joined the staff at Toledo. He was a run game coordinator in 2009, and he then became the offensive coordinator in 2010. At 32 years old, Matt became the head coach for the Rockets after Tim Beckman left to take the head coaching job at Illinois. He was the youngest head coach in the FBS, and it was only just the beginning. Campbell helped coach the Rockets to win the Military Bowl against Air Force, and after the season, Urban Meyer even offered him a spot on the staff at Ohio State, but Matt also passed up that opportunity. In 2012, Campbell's Rockets started out 8-1, and, and actually jumped into the top 25 after a win over number 18 Cincinnati. They'd finished the season 9-4, and, and they lost in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl to number 20 Utah State. In 2013, the team went 7-5, but for some reason, they were not invited to a bowl. In 2014, the Rockets went 9-4, and, and they actually only lost by 7 on the road to Iowa State. Apparently at that game, Matt Campbell and his team got to Jack Trey Stadium so early that he went around and actually tailgated with some of the Iowa State fans. They ended up playing in the GoDaddy Bowl, and they put up 63 points on Arkansas State. 2014 was the big year for Campbell and the Rockets, as they opened up the season with a road win over SEC opponent number 18 Arkansas. He then beat Iowa State in two overtimes, and the Rockets got as high as number 19 in the AP poll after a 7-0 start. They ended up losing to Northern Illinois in the magical 2016 Western Michigan Broncos, but they beat number 24 Temple in the Boca Raton Bowl. Matt Campbell actually never aspired to be a Division I head football coach, as his original goal was to be the head man in his alma mater, Mount Union. After his wild success at Toledo, Iowa State's athletic director could not wait to hire him, and Matt accepted the job on his birthday. Many people thought he could go to Maryland, Missouri, Virginia Tech, or even Wisconsin. As a diehard Mizzou fan, I have to take a moment for myself, as I had no idea we hired Barry Odom over the likes of Matt Campbell, but I can't honestly say I'm shocked. When Matt took over, the entire Iowa State fan base was rejuvenated, and he had a lot of work to do. Before I get into how he rebuilt Iowa State, please take a moment to subscribe if you are new, and hit that like button if you are enjoying today's video. Campbell is often referred to his team as the Island of Misfit Toys, and there are several key players that helped Iowa State football become what it is. So now I'm going to outline 10 players that have defined the Matt Campbell era and helped them reach this point. Alan Lazard was a top 100 player coming out of high school and could have gone anywhere in the country. He grew up an Iowa State fan though and chose to commit to play there. Even when Oklahoma and Notre Dame kept bugging him to reconsider, he shut the door on them and became the team's best receiver from the get-go. Kyle Kempt was a forgotten player who originally played for Oregon State 
but after transferring, he was left without a scholarship until Matt Campbell gave him a chance because he recruited him while he was at Toledo. David Montgomery was an overlooked recruit from Ohio, and not many Power 5 schools were interested in him. He ended up choosing Iowa State, and he would become the team's main running back. Brock Purdy was another underrated quarterback coming out of high school, who was lightly recruited until signing day nearly approached. He ended up choosing the Cyclones over Texas A&M, and he had a chance to shine early on in his Iowa State career. Joel Lanning was the team's starting quarterback at one point, but Matt Campbell thought he could do better on defense, and he became the leader of that unit. Marcel Spears wasn't even ranked in the top 1,000 coming out of high school, and he became one of Campbell's best defensive players and punctuated one of the biggest wins in Cyclone history. Hakeem Butler was a two-star recruit coming into college, but he became a huge factor in the rise of Cyclone football, and he is now playing on Sundays. Greg Eisworth was a kid who began his career as a junior college athlete, but he's now one of the best safeties in Cyclone history. Finally, Brees Hall is the future of Iowa State football, and his recruitment signifies what direction Iowa State football is headed. Going into the 2016 season, it was going to be a quarterback battle between Joel Lanning and former Georgia Bulldog Jacob Park. Mike Warren was the running back, and Alan Lazar was going into his junior year. The Cyclones began the season 0-3, including losses to in-state rivals Northern Iowa and Iowa. They beat San Jose State, but then proceeded to lose their next five games, but it was okay. By this time, it was evident that Joel Lanning wasn't meant to be a quarterback, Jacob Park was okay for now, but he would need to find someone better, and true freshman David Montgomery had emerged as the team's running back. They did end up meeting Kansas and Texas Tech, before a loss to West Virginia ended their season with a 3-9 record. It wasn't good by any means, but Matt got a ton of experience, and he found out where he needed to get better players. Going into 2017, Joel Lanning moved to the defensive side of the ball, and Jacob Park was given the starting quarterback duties. David Montgomery was the running back, and Alan Lazard was now joined by an up-and-coming wide receiver, Hakeem Butler, to make the passing attack stronger. With Lanning's move to defense, coupled with the rise of Marcel Spears, Colons were expected to be better in 2017. John Heacock was an up-and-coming defensive coordinator, and they opened up the season with a win against Northern Iowa. Unfortunately, they lost to Iowa and Texas, and they just weren't getting a whole lot out of their quarterback, Jacob Park. It sounds horrible, but when Park got injured and Kyle Kemp took the starting job, things began to break out for him. Their next game was on the road against number 3 Oklahoma, and in Kemp's first career start, he led them down the field late, and with just under 2 minutes to go, Alan Lazard caught the eventual game-winning touchdown. They beat the number 3 Sooners, and it was arguably their biggest win in school history. They weren't done yet, though. They went on to beat Kansas and Texas Tech in their next two games, and they entered the AP poll at number 25 with a 5-2 record. Their next opponent was number 4 TCU. Led by Kenny Hill, the Horned Frogs were playoff and they lost back-to-back -back close games to West Virginia and Oklahoma State, and then exited the poll for the remainder of the season. They lost to Kansas State by way of a last-second touchdown, and then went on to beat Memphis in the Liberty Bowl. After going 8-5, Matt Campbell was becoming a coaching star, and Iowa State football was becoming respected. Joel Lanning and Alan Lazard's career were over, and they were forever appreciated by fans for paving the way for future success. Despite the hype, the Cyclones were picked to finish 7th in the Big 12, and that was largely due to the fact they didn't really have a quarterback still. Something worth noting is that Matt hired former Illinois star quarterback Nathan Shieldhaus to become their running backs coach. I personally thought that was pretty cool. Kemp started the game against Iowa, and the offense looked horrible in their 13-3 loss, and Kyle also got injured. Zeb Nolan was the starter for the Oklahoma, Akron, and TCU games, but he just wasn't that good of a quarterback, and true freshman Brock Purdy started their game on the road against number 25 Oklahoma State. He ended up throwing for four touchdowns in his coming out party, and they ended up winning the game. He started their next game against number 6 West Virginia, and he led them to another win. It looked like the quarterback chain was going to work for a second straight year, and they are now 6-3 and, and sitting at number 23 in the country. To this point, Hakeem Butler had become the go-to wide receiver, David Montgomery had become one of the nation's best running backs, and Greg Eisworth and Marcel Spears were the leaders of the defense. Despite a loss to Texas, Iowa State finished the year with an 8-5 record once again, and lost to Washington State in the Alamo Bowl. Going into 2019, the Cyclones had a completely different vibe as they were picked to finish third in the Big 12 and were ranked number 23 in the preseason poll and had recently landed a pair of Army All-American running backs in Brees Hall and Jirel Brock. After a three-overtime struggle with Northern Iowa, the Cyclones fell out of the top 25, but a big-time thing was about to happen. For their Week 2 matchup with Iowa, College Game Day decided to make its first appearance in Ames, Iowa, and it was a complete thriller of a game. But unfortunately, a special team's error cost them the game, and Campbell lost to the Hawkeyes for the fourth straight year. They then beat Louisiana Monroe before a close loss on the road to Baylor. No one knew how good Baylor would become at the time, so people were a bit disappointed in that game. Part of the reason Iowa State was struggling because of the lack of a go-to wide receiver and a consistent running back. Eventually, Deshante Jones broke out, and Brees Hall became the best back after he had an 183-yard game against Texas Tech. They won their next three games and got back to the rankings at number 23. But just like the last two seasons, they lost two straight games to the Oklahoma schools before a huge upset win over 19 Texas. They re-entered the polls, but lost to Kansas State to finish the regular season at 8-4 again. They ended up getting killed by Notre Dame in the Camping World Bowl and finished 8-5 for the third straight season. 
Matt Campbell is a coach who's wanted by a lot of bigger schools, and apparently eight NFL teams have reached out to him. But for now, he wants to enjoy his time in Ames and build up Iowa State. He was also rumored to potentially replace Urban Meyer at one point. Matt has a ton of huge wins and has beaten five ranked opponents to date. He still wears a Mount Union shirt every day to work, so he will never forget his roots and where he came from. I personally love Matt Campbell. I hope to see him build Iowa State into a national power, but I do honestly believe he will be in the NFL someday. Iowa State is expected to be better in 2020, and Brock Purdy is a dark horse Heisman contender. They have a good quarterback and a good running back, but they need to figure out their wide receiver situation. I know I'll be rooting for the Cyclones as long as he is there, and I'm really excited to see how they do in 2020. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please be sure to hit that like button, as these videos take me forever to write and make, and I'd really appreciate every like I can get. Let me know if you're an Iowa State football fan, let me know if you think Matt Campbell will eventually go to the NFL, and drop a suggestion for a future video you'd like me to do next. If you like videos like this, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. I really need your help to hit 2.5k subscribers by the end of June, and you don't want to miss out on any more college football content. If you are still here though, please check out these other cool videos I have selected for you to watch next, and until next time, peace.